<clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, welcome to again our lecture. Uh, in last lecture, we were discussing about the detail energy audit, and in detail energy audit, uh, it is again classified into the pre audit phase, audit phase, and post audit phase. So, in previous lecture, uh, we uh, discussed the pre uh, post audit phase, and in post audit phase. The most of the portion is related to uh, report writing after completion of uh, energy detail energy audit. Means in the energy audit report, we conclude the uh, all our findings with uh, suggestions, name of vendors, then performance analysis of uh, utilities, and uh, up to and then we have prepared the um, uh, conservation measures and in conservation measures we come to the priority uh, uh, report or priority on which priority on which points we are going to implement the suggestions given by the uh, auditors so up to this point we have discussed now uh, we will see the benchmarking again we have uh, come to know this benchmarking the benchmarking is nothing but the uh, it is required for the assessment some because of the historical data and from the our target if we fix some target a specific energy consumption then and then it is possible to achieve the energy conservation program and for that purpose what we are doing we are calculating the uh, specific energy consumption of our plant and we will see what is the specific energy consumption of developed country plant? Say, for example, cement industry, it may be some ginning industry, it may be some weaving industry or textile industry, metallurgical or steel industries are there. What is the specific consumption of our uh, industry and what is the specific consumption of uh, developed country? Or it may be, say, where the technology, new technology has been adopted new machineries has been adopted and already some energy conservation has been carried out. So by considering these two points, we have to fit, we have to uh, make some baseline or benchmarking <coughs> for that uh, purpose. Therefore, benchmarking is very much necessary uh, for achieving the fruitful result from the energy conservation. So now, we will discuss the different instruments. No doubt, uh, uh, we have to use some different instruments for the energy conservation uh, in the audit programs. Because in each uh, utility section, all the equipments, monitoring equipments, or it may be the measuring instruments are not per per, uh, permanently installed. Otherwise, it become a very costly installation of electrical system or very costly installation of any type of utility section. So what we are doing, we are using some portable meters, some portable instruments for measurement only for the energy audit program. For example, if you take a, some utility, for example, it is a chilling plant. Okay, it may be a, some uh, compressor, to, air compressors are there. What we are using, we are using on the panels only the voltmeter and ammeters. Or most of the time nowadays, a uh, multifunction meters is has been installed. So by single meter, we can measure the current voltage, power factor, and all these things. But these meters, whatever the indicating type of meters, which is has been installed on the uh, entire panel, it is going to measure the total energy consumption or whatever the energy status in the entire, whatever the number of feeders uh, outgoing from that panel. Say, for example, in that uh, particular panel, uh, five compressor and two chilling plants has been installed. So it will measure the total energy power factor, KVA, KVAR, and current of that five units or five utility section, five utility units, isn't it? But if you want to examine the particular for one uh, compressor, what is the KVA rating, what is the output, what is the, uh, say, uh, it's a, uh, KVR power factor of this one. So we have to use some different type of portable watt, portable meters so that we can measure the uh, different parameter of the system. 
okay so therefore we are using some different kind of which is not installed in the system so one is the fuel efficiency monitor and this fuel efficiency monitor is used for the uh, to see uh, either the fuel has been properly combustion uh, combustion is taking out or not for example this is the same which we are using for the puc certificate for our two wheeler and four wheelers so there is a one rod is there you can see this is the rod it is has been inserted in the exhaust pipe that is the silencer of our two wheelers and four wheeler and by looking that we can monitor what is the carbon dioxide level what is the monoxide and what are other different toxic gases are emitted isn't it and if your combustion is properly burned definitely whatever the flue gases is small the quantity will be small okay so this type of uh, fuel efficiency monitor it will it will indicate uh, how effectively we are utilizing that fuels it may be a oil it may be a diesel it may be a petrol it may be a some coals are there so it will see, it will indicate that either our fuel is properly burned or properly utilized in the burning section or not isn't it so this is the fuel monitoring Uh, fuel efficiency monitoring system is there we can use for the boilers and all these things ferrite uh, separate ferrites can be used for o2 and co2 measurements and uh, now we can measure the separate meters what is the quantity of o2 and co2 is there so we can use this uh, instrument also for the measurement of the uh, in the boiler sections now contact thermometer we know that uh, in the industry there are different temperature uh, say in some process different temperature is required and we have to keep the temperature in the permissible limit or as per the uh, production process or some process are there so there are two type of thermometers are used one is the contact type thermometers where the temperature is not so high it is it is used for the hot water it is maybe used for the if uh, fluid or some some chemicals are there so we are using some thermo uh, contact type thermometers these are maybe a thermocouple type these are can be used uh, in the gases in the hot air in the hot water and it is inserted the probe whatever the probe or whatever the uh, rods are there it is inserted into that one and it will measure the temperature but if the temperature is somewhat very high in that 1000 degree centigrade or 115 150 one or 1500 centigrade are there that contact type thermometer cannot be used and therefore we have to use some uh, infrared thermometers are there so the contact thermometers are used in the silos if you visit any process industry or chemical industry or some pharmaceutical industry you will find some silos that is a, it is made up of some uh, stainless steel containers are there and from one container to other container the fluid has been transferred with the help of pump and uh, we are going doing some uh, sort of process some heat is required some temperature is required and therefore some uh, rtd type or uh, thermocouple type uh, uh, thermometers has been is, uh, installed permanently installed over the uh, silos or over the uh, some containers are there and it indicate the temperature of the system temperature of the containers or fluids whatever the liquids are there or it may be gases it may be uh, some waters and uh, maybe different things are there now infrared thermometer it can be used for measurement of temperature at some particular distance you may observe that uh, uh, whenever the train comes to some uh, big station or junctions are there where maintenance may be carried out a person is uh, just uh, ray, uh, just uh, lay one rays over the uh, wheels or some bearings of this one and it will measure the temperature of wheels or temperature of the bearings so this is uh, from some distance we can measure for the measurement purpose for the monitoring purpose we can use thermo uh, uh, infrared thermometers are there now it is this is very much popular for measurement the temperature body temperature because of the corona pandemics are there so this is one type of uh, infrared thermometers are used for measurement of temperature where the temperature is very high and we are not using permanent thermometers or or some temperature measurement unit uh, measuring uh, say instrument in the process now water flow meters are there definitely uh, 
uh, uh, we have seen in the utility section we have to measure the water input and uh, what is the how much water is going to utilize in the different process and if the wastage of water is more and more is there definitely we have to do the conservation of waters so if you do the conservation of water the meaning is that you are uh, after what is the result of conservation of water the meaning is that you are going to lift much smaller waters are there it can be utilized very effectively so when you are pumping the water the quantity of water has been reduced definitely the energy which is utilized to run the pump is going to reduce so there is a uh, if you just go the energy con uh, if you go for the water conservation the ultimate goal is the energy conservation are there so the water balance system measurement of water input water output and flow water uh, flow meters are has to be installed over the uh, our uh, pipelines are there okay so this is the things it is not a uh, say only the water flow measurement it can be used for the different fluids which you are using in the process it may be a, some liquids are there and some process materials are there it can be utilized to measure that uh, flow meter over the pipelines speed measurement the speed measurement is used for the measurement of speed for the any rotating machines are there any rotating uh, say different compressor motors are there it may be a pump motors are there to see that one or to bring at some particular speed so a required speed we can measure the speed with the by the two type one is the tachometer which we are using in the our lab it is a contact type thermometer uh, it is a contact type uh, tachometers are there but some of the tachometers are the stroboscopic type that is uh, going to measure at some particular uh, distance and it does not need to uh, connect the uh, to the shaft oh, isn't it so this is one stroboscopic uh, method is there uh, and we can measure the speed of machines are there now leakage detector the leakage detector uh, you can you may that uh, if there is a leakage you can see okay if there is a hot water leakage if it is a say water leakage in the pipeline it is visible by our naked eye but if it is a uh, leakage in the compressed air we cannot see the air and we cannot determine where is the leakage in the pipelines similarly if there is a some uh, if you are using some gases are there okay and if the gas is uh, uh, not visible say there is no color and all these things we cannot uh, uh, detect where is the leakage in the pipeline so and the second thing is that whenever if suppose there is a compressed air is there and leakage is there you will heard some hissing sound but if you see if you visit any industry there is a continuous sound of different machines are there and it is not possible to hear the hissing sound of the leakages in the pipeline so there is a leakage separate leakage detectors are be used to identify where is the leakages in the compressed air line where is the leakages in the some steam lines are there and hence if you just sub, uh, trap that leakages if you just overcome this leakages definitely we can conserve the energy the, the meaning is that suppose uh, if you take the example if the compressed air leakages are there the compressor is continuously running there is a no uh, down period in the compressor so if you trap that leakages definitely your compressor is going to shut off for particular time and once again the compressed air pressure decreases your compressor uh, compressor is again started so this start and stop time if you increase the stop time in the compressor the energy can be conserved or energy can be saved so the if only the leakages if you reduce the leakages in the system the leakages may be the wastage it may be a water leakage it may be a cold water it may be leakages due to the thermal insulation failure it may be leakages due to the pipelines so by trapping all leakages we can do a remarkable energy conservation in the system now lux meter it is a quite uh, simple uh, meters are there where a uh, one uh, mm, sensor is there this is the sensor and this is it will display the uh, your uh, uh, number of lux or lux measure uh, light intensity in that particular area so for the measurement of lighting system 
or to do the energy conservation in lighting system lux meter is very much necessary because the illumination level has been uh, the norms has been laid for the different area for a production area what would be the illumination for the warehouse what would be the illumination for the utility section what would be the illumination level for drawing hall it is offices and some paint shop is there so the illumination level will be very high where color is important in the dyeing section uh, for the textile industry in the dyeing section the color uh, is very important so the uh, light intensity should be very high but whereas it is a warehouse only you are storing the uh, finished product or it is a some raw uh, material is going to place or store where the color is not important the intensity of light is not important so in the industry itself in a single industry also the illumination level is different in each and every section similarly the illumination level is going to change from the type of industry suppose it is a engineering engineering firm so light in term, uh, light requirement will be different but it is a paint shop for painting the some say four wheelers or two wheelers colors are there the light intensity should be very high the light requirement will be different at the same time it is a textile industry where the color is very important in the dyeing section coloring shops are there so again the light intensity requirement is different so therefore the illumination measurement of illumination become a very important part in the energy conservation program for such type of industry so we are using one lux meter it will measure the intensity of light at some particular uh, working place so this is used for the measurement of light if you find that the light intensity is very small or it is less than your recommendation level then what would be the method you can bring down the light to the lower uh, height isn't it if suppose it is mounted at a some higher uh, uh, height is there uh, some more height is there we can bring down to the lower height isn't it or it will say that there is a need to clean the reflector need to clean the light uh, uh, luminaries are there so it will increase the light output so the regular cleaning of the reflector of the light also uh, increase the uh, utility of that light and efficiency of the light so this is uh, the uh, energy conservation energy audit method of energy audit then uh, what are the points to be considered in the measurement system what is the objective of uh, pre audit phase audit phase and post audit phase and what is the different type of instruments to be used in the energy uh, audit programs so next time we will consider the energy conservation uh, uh, we will see the energy conservation or we will see one the energy management systems so to do, today we will stop here and next time we will uh, see the other part